It is a story that has made national headlines in the last 24 hours, but a story Reality Check has been telling you for nearly two years. NBC obtained a copy of the Obama administration's rules for assassinating U.S. citizens. What President Obama told Ben about this kill list in a face-to-face -face interview. The details in a Reality Check you will not see anywhere else. Can the office of the president play the role of judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to terror suspects, even U.S. citizens? A 16-page memorandum has been leaked to NBC News. It explains the process the administration has been using for its assassination program. The Justice Department memo concludes that the U.S. government can order the killing of American citizens if they are believed to be senior operational leaders of al-Qaeda or an associated force. And that is the case even if there is no intelligence indicating they are engaged in an active plot to attack the U.S. The memo says in part, quote, The condition that an operational leader present an imminent threat of violent attack against the United States does not require the United States to have clear evidence that a specific attack on the U.S., persons and interests, will take place in the immediate future, end quote. So in short, in order to be labeled an imminent threat, you're not required to actually be an imminent threat. It was in September of last year when I had the chance to interview President Obama one-on-one. -on -one. And when I did, I asked him specifically about the so-called presidential kill list. Uh, how do you as president, or any president for that matter, regardless of party or person, utilize that power to assassinate even U.S. citizens? Well, first of all, you're uh, basing this on uh, reports in uh, the news that uh, have never been confirmed by me, uh, and I don't talk about our national security uh, decisions in that way. Well, as it turns out, it's not just the president himself making these decisions, because the memo explains an informed, high-level official of the U.S. government may determine that the targeted American has been recently involved in activities, posing a threat of a violent attack, and that there is no evidence suggesting that he has renounced or abandoned such activities. That memo does not define the words recently or activities. As we've told you a number of times, these drone strikes have already killed American citizens living overseas, including Muslim cleric Anwar Awalaki, who, as I mentioned to the president, was a U.S. citizen. He was born in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And while the government claimed that he was a threat to the United States, no evidence of that threat was made public. Awalaki was not afforded trial, nor was he charged with treason, which does not require him to be in the country. But he wasn't the only American targeted by the assassination program. Two weeks after Awalaki was killed, the U.S. used a drone strike to kill Awalaki's 16-year-old son, Abdul Rahman Awalaki. That 16-year-old was killed while at a family barbecue. And he, too, was a U.S. citizen born in Denver, Colorado. So what this means for you is that there is no clause in the Bill of Rights that suspends due process because of fear. Every time I talk about this issue, I get emails from people saying that Anwar Awalaki deserved to die. But I am yet to hear one reason, just one reason, why his 16-year-old son needed to die. The truth is, no one has legitimately answered that question. Not viewers, not this administration, not even the president himself. And that is exactly the problem. And that is Reality Check. You can find the sources for the story posted on our website, fox19.com. And if you'd like to make your voice heard on the story, you can head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan. And I